Okay, so the graffiti we're gonna be talking about today, so graffiti in its modern form, uh, was born in the US in the 70s in cities like New York and Philadelphia. Uh, originally, it was kids from every social class and every skin color you can imagine who started writing their name or nicknames with markers and spray cans on walls in the underground uh, uh, and in the streets just as a way to cheat boredom and to maybe have a, an impact on their environment rather than their environment constantly have an, uh, having an impact on them. And um, very quickly that became super popular because it's a cheap way to like entertain yourself. And, um, and more and more kids started doing it so very quickly instead of just having to tag more than others you started to to have to be able to stand out you had to do better than others bigger better bigger letters so like the, we went from tagging which is just a quick inscription to like bigger letters with many colors 3ds characters quotes and um, from then like it was kind of uh, uh, taken by the hip-hop movement in the very like late 70s uh, so the hip-hop movement includes rapping DJing uh, breakdancing beatboxing and graffiti and from then of course it became way more famous because there were uh, like uh, video clips uh, of music that were shown in the entire world so it quickly reached Europe in the 80s South America in the 90s in Lebanon it took longer because the country had other stuff to deal with so um, so the first uh, graffiti writers uh, in Lebanon, there was like four of them in the very beginning of the 90s who painted for like two years or three years in downtown on the buildings that were about to be destroyed and rebuilt by Solidaire. And then in 98, Fish uh, started, like an artist named Fish and his friend Rat and others started to paint again, not even knowing that some people did it before them. And they started to do a few pieces, but it really exploded in 2006 uh, when Israel was uh, carpet bombing this country and some kids were like maybe if we're getting bombed I can go out and paint and the cops like will leave me alone and they did and they noticed that the cops didn't do anything so then that's where that's in 2006, 7, 8, 9 uh, is when most of the current graffiti writer of the scene started painting. Today there is about like 10, 12 of us in terms of really active ones I would say uh, yeah 8, 10 of us and uh, the reason why uh, like I'm a part of them is because I arrived in Lebanon in 2013 as a journalist and I had been doing tagging so really re like really quick uh, vandalism since I was 15 years old uh, but when I arrived in Lebanon I noticed that there was a lot of really beautiful street art and graffiti on the wall and I started to uh, to want to interview these people so I found them I interviewed them and we became really close friends with most of them and uh, and they taught me how to get from tagging to actual big graffiti so I evolved a lot in that craft uh, uh, in this country and two years later I started doing that tour in 2015. And the reason why I started doing that is because having now painted in quite a few countries uh, I noticed that this one was absolutely unique for a handful of reasons. First and most important, graffiti isn't illegal in Lebanon. It doesn't mean it's legal, it means it's in a grey area. If you look at the law in Lebanon, the only thing that's forbidden is to do uh, like either writing or drawing that are specifically for or against a particular political group or religious group. Therefore, if I was to say, down with the Christians or uh, go Hezbollah, that's illegal. But if you say, down with the government, supposedly that works, because it's not a specific group, if you, if you know what I mean. So we paint during the day, as opposed to everywhere else where I've been. We just go on a wall and we can spend four hours painting on a wall. And when the cops come, they say, what are you doing? And we say, we're not getting paid, it's not political, it's not religious. And usually they ask us to write the name of their girlfriend next to it, and they take a selfie and then they leave which is way nicer than getting chased by the cops in Paris at night like it happened to me way too many times. So there is this aspect of it. The fact that the population vastly supports us, which means when we paint, uh, like we, we come with our spray can, we start painting, and the population, Christian, uh, Muslims, poor, rich, 90% of them, they say, God bless you, God bless you for your work, thank you so much. Even when they can't even read what we're writing, they see that we're not political. They see bright colors on walls that are often riddled with bullet holes or with posters of crooked politicians and they really support what we do because they see that we're not a part of all of that. Um, what else? Yeah, like it's also beautiful to see a country like this where people make way less money than in France unfortunately but the cans, the material we use is like three times more expensive than it is in my uh, uh, native city which is Paris. In Paris it would be like $3.50 for a good quality can, here it's $10. And still, we go out in the streets and we spend a lot of money on buying cans to go do the most beautiful thing we can do day in, day out. So that shows dedication and a love for the craft that I think is very commendable and, and, and very beautiful. 
I love also the fact that the graffiti writers are from basically all of the communities that you can find in Lebanon. I have uh, graffiti writers friends who are Druzi, Shia, Sunni, Christian, uh, and all of them paint together. They're not all friends, but even when they're not friends, they never fight physically, which they do in every other country in the, in the graffiti scenes. And they don't cover one, uh, one, uh, one another because there is so much space that we don't have to do that. We respect each other's craft even when we're not friends. And that's beautiful for me instead of having scenes where there is a lot of violence and, and stupid things like that. Um, so, like, uh, that's a, a good uh, resume of what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna start by this wall over there. Because before we start, two things. When we're gonna talk about graffiti, we're talking about something that's done for free. Graffiti is not when you have commission jobs and everything, that's not really a part of graffiti and you cannot call yourself a graffiti writer if you do only commissioned work. I do commissioned work regularly, I do this tour, I do uh, graffiti classes, but most of what I do, 98% of what I do is buying my spray cans and going in on the walls and painting for free, that's graffiti. Secondly, what people ask a lot, the difference between street art and graffiti, well, there is no strict definition because that movement came from the street. Therefore, there was no scholars who were like, we're gonna call this this way and that this way. So you could say that graffiti is what street art was born out of, because it was originally kids writing their name everywhere in the street, and then it became people doing stencils, doing, doing calligraphy on the wall with the brushes instead of spray cans and everything. And then this became so loved and famous, the street art, that now you could include graffiti in it. But you would not have Banksy and all of that without graffiti. Banksy even started by writing his name with spray cans on the wall before he did all of these super smart uh, pieces of street art that you know.